We're outside today with Jonathan Larson with the University of Kentucky Entomology Department. And you guys do a ton of research. Yeah, we got a lot of bugs here in Kentucky. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. Most of them are kind of indifferent, but we got to understand that. We got to understand their biology and we got to understand how we interact with them. So you guys have got an entire program that study their impact on nature and landscape is also their impact on people. Yeah, we have a lot of basic research that goes on in the department. People trying to understand the insects themselves, looking at the way they smell, looking at the way they survive being frozen over the winter. We have some people working on protecting pollinators like bees and monarchs. We have others that do stuff like I do, which is look at crop pests or ornamental pests. And we have a lot of folks that are focusing in on that human health aspect. One of the human health aspects is ticks. Yes. Ticks in Kentucky have a real interesting history. So we're trying to figure out just where they are, what all the species are. We have a real good handle on who lives here, but not exactly every county that they live in. And so we want to be able to teach people what risks they may be encountering if they're going outside in a certain place. And we definitely want to help them keep themselves safe. And we're going to talk to one of these individuals that are studying ticks right here in the state of Kentucky. That's right. So what kept you interested in studying ticks? Originally, I was interested in any kind of vector disease. So okay. ticks are big vectors for public health diseases. And I had an opportunity to work with Kentucky Department of Public Health on their tick surveillance. And I took it, and I, I love it. It's a lot of fun. So for people that spend a lot of time outdoors, our turkey season is right around the corner here in the state of Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And in April, ticks are starting to come out. Tell me a little bit about what times of the year and types of areas that ticks are most prevalent. So ticks are active in really humid areas. As it gets closer to the summer, it gets a little hotter outside, they'll become more active. And you'll find them in areas of like forest and field habitat. So areas where you're gonna hunt for, like you said, turkey or any other animals. They like to stay pretty hidden. So in grassy fields or they'll hide on the edges of branches like this and wait for a host to come by and grab onto you. <laughs> <laughs> so they can be hard to see on, on you, yeah. and sometimes really small, but especially if you're wearing camo, they can really hide on there. Yes. So tell me what you would do, if you're gonna go out turkey hunting, hiking, what you would do to prevent becoming a host for a tick. So the first thing that you wanna do is provide some kind of insecticide. Permethrin is the best. You just apply it to your clothes and then it can work for several days after application. That way you don't have to put it on your skin they get onto the permethrin and crawl around for a little bit, they die off. What would you recommend as far as a chemical that people would apply to themselves to keep ticks off of them? DEET is a good one to use. Most insecticide repellents that you can buy at the store will have a list of the insects that they repel, mm -hmm. and any of the ones that say ticks are probably a good choice. DEET can come from levels from 10% to nearly 100%. Yeah. Tucking your pants into your socks, wearing high socks and boots is really effective. You really just want to think about what is the best way that I can cover myself so that the ticks cannot reach my skin. Okay. So duct taping your socks around your ankles, tucking your shirt into your pants, wearing a bandana around your neck. Those are things that are going to provide a barrier between the ticks and you. I know that when you are out in any kind of habitat where ticks may be, it's always a good idea to do tick checks mm -hmm. every once in a while. How much does re removing the tick pretty quickly help and avoid any type of tick-borne illnesses? It's extremely important. And once that tick attaches to you, if it's carrying that bacteria, it needs about 36 hours before you become infected. Okay. So if you can remove the tick as soon as you see it, that is essential. So when you do get a tick on you, you found one that's been embedded. There's a million ways that people have talked about removing ticks. Yes. Tell me what you recommend. So there's one safe way to remove a tick. When it embeds into you, you want to take a pair of tweezers, get as close to the skin as you can, pull on the tick straight up until it lets go. People will say twist the tick. Um, that can cause the mouth parts to break off and while the most of the body of the tick will come off, those mouth parts will still be embedded in okay. your skin. Some people have some allergies to ticks. What type of allergies would you have to be concerned with? One of the big allergies is red meat allergy. Okay. Um, this is something that's usually picked up from the Lone Star Tick. The Lone Star Tick in the saliva has a sugar molecule called alpha-gal. So I'm here today with Dr. Turbyville, and I was recently speaking to some entomologists at UK, and they were telling me about some allergies from ticks. It's called what? 
Galactose Alpha 13 Galactose is the whole name, but it's okay. uh, most people shorten it as Alpha Gal. People have been talking about it now for a couple years here in the state of Kentucky, but it's been around for quite some time. It was first reported around 2008, but it's probably been around longer because we know there were case reports as far back as 1989 where patients had reactions to meat that we look back and say that was probably Alpha Gal. It resides in pretty much hooved animals, is that right? Alpha-gal is a sugar. Most allergies are proteins, so like if you're allergic to peanuts or shellfish, it's a protein that you're reacting to. You react almost immediately when you eat it, whereas with alpha-gal, it's a delayed reaction. So it's like two to six hours after you eat the meat, and it's only mammalian meat. So mostly beef and pork, but it can be in deer, it can be in any mammal, basically. Okay. I would say compared to allergies like peanut and shellfish, it tends to be more mild reactions that we see. Usually hives is the most common thing, but there's a subset of patients that just gets abdominal pain and distress and they'll have that again, usually delayed a couple hours after they eat. And I've seen a few patients who just had swelling, like lip swelling, and they didn't have the hives with it. But most people will have hives and itching. Is this a lifelong diagnosis? So for most, it is not. The Lone Star Tick is the primary vector that passes it. So they'll get bit by the tick and then their levels of alpha-gal will go up and then over time as long as they don't keep getting bit by the tick it'll fall usually to a level where they can tolerate meat again. But then if they get bit again and resensitize that level can go up higher so there's no guarantee that it can't come back even if it's gone away. If you were to have someone come in, and would, you would not tell them to avoid their passion and activities of being outdoors, right? No, absolutely not. You need to take reasonable precautions. Try to avoid getting the ticks on you. Check yourself for ticks, but I would not discourage people from going out in the woods and doing what they enjoy doing. I think it also underscores the importance of what you guys do at Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife, because we know that the tick population mirrors the deer population. For that reason, I would tell people, don't stop hunting. You know, we need to do what we can to help control the population. Mm -hmm.